Good morning. Thank you for attending my presentation. My name is Sanjay Rao. I'm a second year medical student at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, working with Dr. Barrios and Dr. Ansari. Today we'll be discussing the topic of SCAD or spontaneous coronary artery dissection in two female patients. I will discuss the patient presentations, angiography, and treatment. We have nothing to disclose at this time. So we are going to go ahead and distinguish the two patients as patient one and patient two just to keep things straight. I'll go ahead and present all the information regarding patient one first and then move on to patient two. Patient one is a 33-year-old female who has a history of asthma and is a regular tobacco user. She presents to the ED with chest pain and shortness of breath and states that the pain radiates to her arms and legs and also has numbness in her fingers bilaterally. So in terms of physical exam for patient one, we see that it's unremarkable. We saw nothing particularly concerning um, with vitals. Patient one did, however, have an elevated systolic and diastolic blood pressure. With EKG, we saw that patient one um, presented with ST elevation, which is indicative of myocardial infarction. And so here we have figure one and figure two. Figure one is the coronary artery angiogram for patient one, and then we see the angiography video um, in figure two. So the coronary artery angiogram cranial projection of patient one, um, we see a variation in lumen size, most notable in the mid to distal segment, which is very consistent with a spiral dissection. Also the blush of contrast that we see um, is extra cardiac, that's kidney calyces. So we can see the same angiography video for patient one, and we see that spiral dissection is mentioned. So left ventriculogram was also done for patient one as we see in figure five. And this patient's left ventriculogram demonstrates severe apical hypokinesis and distal inferior akinesis with the rest of the walls having normal function. We can go ahead and see the video for that. So now we move on to patient two. Patient two is a 29 year old who gave birth to a baby boy six days prior to the onset of chest pain and shortness of breath. Her pain, um, she states, radiates to her arms bilaterally and to the upper back region. She also complains of nausea and vomiting. The patient does not have any past medical history. So again, we see that the physical exam is unremarkable with this patient as well. Um, we do however see that she has an elevated heart rate and um, systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And the same presentation with the EKG for patient two as well. She also presents with ST elevation, indicative of MI, myocardial infarction. And so this could be a potential sign to look out for um, in SCAD, for SCAD in female patients. So for patient two, we see this figure three and figure four. These are the coronary artery angiogram and the angiography video. And we see that patient two's angiogram is a little more subtle and we do see indications of an intimal flat after the large septal branch. And we consider this to be a case of type 3 tubular type SCAD. We see the video here as well. And patient 2, um, here we have figure 6 with a left ventriculogram. And here, patient 2's left ventriculogram demonstrates mid to extensive anterolateral apical and mid to distal inferior severe hypokinesis to akinesis, as you, we will see with this video. So here we can see that left ventriculogram so, uh, for patient two, like I said. And so what are some of the key takeaways from these two patients, these two SCAD patients? So SCAD is something that mainly presents in healthy young females, and it presents with very minimal comorbidities and risk factors that we see include pregnancy, acute emotional or psychological stress, and other less studied factors. SCAD understanding among physicians is really essential in diagnosis, especially in the young female uh, patient population presenting with chest pain and shortness of breath. So there definitely needs to be um, increased awareness about SCAD in the female population and its associated risk factors. SCAD is also an important differential in acute coronary symptoms and some presentations may be very difficult to distinguish. Angiography in the correction setting and intravascular imaging are important ways to assess the dissection. And a drawback with intracornear imaging is the wiring of the vessel, and that can produce complications, so physicians should be aware of that. Both patients were treated with aspirin, beta blockers, and statin. Thank you so much.